TwiftSuit is a testing inspection and uh, certification uh, company. It's a very interesting business because it's so diverse and, and you have an expert for nearly everything. I said from uh, the sausage up to, to nuclear plants. We have um, an autonomous uh, checking uh, of damages, so you drive through a, a huge uh, scanner, uh, I would say, and, uh, and it will detect whether this is a damage or a scratch or uh, if it's just some dirt on the vehicle. And that is tested because we have so many uh, pictures of damaged cars. Um, that, that's an area where we use our data. My management style is not to make decisions, but uh, bring the team together that they are making the decisions and that they are um, the best uh, to, to, to do all the, all the decisions and, and ask them yeah, to be part of, of the decision making and not just asking for something, but uh, uh, bringing something up and, and then therefore um, deciding on them themselves. This is CRNA TV. My name is Hendrik Deckers. I'm here today with uh, Stefan Domsch, who is the CIO of TÜVSUIT. A very warm welcome, Stefan. Hello, Hendrik. Thanks for having me here and having the interview. Stefan, you have a degree in IT from the Otto Friedrich University in Bamberg. You worked seven years at Accenture and nine years at BMW, and you joined TÜVSUIT in 2016. So, Stefan, Tell us a little bit more about yourself. What's your background? Who are you really? And how did you arrive in this position? All right, Hendrik. Yes, uh, I think I'm a, I'm a little computer nerd. So mm -hmm. I started uh, with computers in the very early times as well with even with, uh, with a computer that had not really a keyboard, but a foil uh, keyboard. Uh, and uh, and uh, if you remember, these computers had uh, one kilobyte of memory, <laughs> uh, main memory. Um, and I think that's that's long time gone. Mm -hmm. But uh, over, over the time, I had really the interest in, uh, in computer science. So I founded my, my first uh, company um, that uh, developed software still during uh, the, the high school time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I continued that as well in the university times where we created a software for, for cinema. So okay. you would call it an ERP system <laughs> right now, I guess, a uh, ticketing system, but also all uh, the background uh, for, for the financial things uh, that they had to work in a, in a cinema. Very interesting because you got to see all the, the movies for free and, mm -hmm. uh, and that was uh, very interesting. We sold it, but uh, in... Um, uh, starting then with, uh, with uh, Accenture, or at this point in time, Anderson Consulting in, mm -hmm. in Sofia Antipolis, uh, you, you couldn't do both. I mean, you couldn't work as a consultant and have your own company. So in the, in the e-commerce times, I sold uh, the company and then uh, went uh, to, to Accenture or Anderson Consulting in Sofia Antipolis in the south of France. Wow, so what a place to start a career, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it, was, it was by chance because uh, it was uh, when um, they had these big fears of uh, attracting people. Mm -hmm. So I think the war for talent at this point in time was also on, they try to attract uh, people in big fairs, trying to tell them about uh, the companies. And uh, Anderson Consulting was there with their technology park and mm -hmm. that they have and still have in, in Sofia Antipolis uh, between Cannes and Nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, they invited uh, all the students for, for the interviews that passed the first round, uh, interviewed them uh, in, in, in France. And I felt that's, that's a cool place to be. Let's, let's go there. Uh, and and start uh, start a new life uh, in in France. Okay, super. And now and now we are at uh, Suit. So for all of us who don't know Suit, can you explain a little bit what this company is all about? Yeah. TÜVSUIT is a testing inspection and uh, certification uh, company. So mm -hmm. we're doing uh, testing, for example, for, for products. We're doing inspections for, for elevators. Uh, and we're doing certifications of processes like ISO 30 certifications and so on. Um, it started in, in Germany, so it's a big heritage of 150 years. So this company was uh, founded more than 150 years before. Um, and uh, it's, it's still there. It, it started small in Germany. 
uh, because mm -hmm. of um, um, pressure tanks exploding um, uh, for the steam steam pressure tanks. So mm -hmm. there, there was the question: How can we we secure and safeguard uh, the technology? And that's when uh, TÜV uh, TÜV was founded. There are many many TÜVs, and they went then together uh, to different um, bigger TÜVs. So TÜV mm -hmm. Süd. Um, is, is one of the biggest. We have then TÜV Rhineland and TÜV Nord. They are a little bit uh, smaller, but they are competitors uh, mm -hmm. to us. And it's, uh, it's a very interesting business because it's so diverse and, and you have an expert for nearly everything. I said from, uh, from uh, the sausage up to, to nuclear plants, you have all the experts here in this company. And that makes this company very, very special. Yeah, and there's even a saying, ein uh, in, uh, in, in German, right? Exactly, because uh, that's uh, for, for, the, for the cars, uh, which is uh, the, the widely known uh, for the cars. You have to bring your car to the TÜV. And uh, so therefore, you even have the verb, uh, den TÜV machen. Mm -hmm. So you do the TÜV for, for something and, and it's used in all senses. So even if you want to check something, you, you said, uh, is, is uh, the TÜV done for, for that? So it's very, very known in Germany. I think if you go onto the street, uh, probably 90% would, would recognize the name and, uh, yeah. and, and understand that because also the driver's license um, that's done uh, from, from, uh, from us and that's, uh, that's a monopoly in, in Germany. So all the, all the ones that have a driver's license, at least here in Bavaria, I got it from, uh, from TÜV Süd. Yeah. So inspecting cars, inspecting elevators, having driver license, inspecting production systems, food, sausages, but not only in, in, in Germany, also uh, I understand 50% of your business is in the rest of the world, right? Correct. Uh, I think the expansion started like about 20 years ago mm -hmm. when, um, when, when we wanted to open up for, for the rest of the world. So that expansion started and it's now around about 50% even, I mean, compared if you, if you want to count uh, people or if you want uh, to count turnover, that's a bit even uh, more, than, more than 50%. The biggest ones are um, mostly in, in China, um, we have in the Americas, we have uh, India, we have Singapore. So the Asian uh, world and in Middle East, uh, of course. So that's, I guess, that's the expanding because Germany, it, it's quite a saturated uh, market and uh, the other markets are not. So therefore, there's a, there's a big and good potential for us to grow outside of Germany as well. Okay, and can, can you give us some idea of size, of number of people, revenues? Uh, how yeah. big is the company? Um, yeah, I think we're, we're in that right now over 26,000 uh, people uh, all over the world with, I think, around about uh, 13,000 here in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, the turnover um, is uh, 2.5, uh, 2.6 uh, billion um, all over in, 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 in Euro. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's an increasing uh, business. And I think we're, we're split into, into five, we call it, uh, divisions, mm -hmm. uh, mobility, uh, being the biggest uh, division that takes care of everything around uh, the car and mobility. Um, also, uh, if we talk about the uh, future, I think that's, that's the interesting part. So who's taking artificial intelligence or self-driving cars? Who's taking a driver's license for them? I think we are pretty active in this field uh, as well to, to see that. Or for homologation of new cars, uh, we're, we're also very much involved in the automotive industry. And then you have the industrial uh, industry of all the, this pressure, everything that's around pressure, but also chemical plants that, that have pressure tanks uh, we are doing. Um, going then to the real uh, estate and infrastructure area where everything is around building. So for example, the elevators uh, mm -hmm. are, are in there, but we're also doing a lot of inspection of, um, um, of, of building itself. So if, 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 if you want to know if everything is done um, to, to the standards, then uh, TÜVSUIT would, would do uh, and, and would help out. And then uh, moving on is, is the, the product uh, division that takes care of, of all products. And, and we're here talking about products from uh, food, but also um, um, everything, computers um, that are products or consumer products, but also a lot in the medical environment. I think that's the biggest growing uh, that, that we have seen over the last years because there's a huge demand as well in, in the certification um, and evaluation of, of medical uh, products. And then last but not least, all the processes um, that are in, in our business assurance uh, division, 
where they're where they are taking care of all processes, be it IT processes, but but everything that that has a norm um, and and has an ISO um, norm, for example. But but as as well training organization where we train external people, but also our internal uh, people with an academy, a big big training organization. So a huge organization worldwide, fifty percent in Germany five different divisions, many, many different business models, different businesses. Mm -hmm. So what is, what is today the main challenge uh, for your organization? What is, what, what's really cooking in the company today? I think there, there, there are two things. Uh, one is, of course, uh, we, we depend on the knowledge of, of our inspectors. I mean, mm -hmm. they are goods. They, they have the knowledge. They know what to do. And uh, in, our, in the digital world, that is all now changing. So how do we keep up with things like uh, there, there is maybe not a person needed, but how can you trust that everything else is, is working uh, mm -hmm. accordingly and, and how to support that? So it's, it's a fine line between supporting the inspector and replacing the inspector and and we don't want to do that of course i mean we we want to keep that so therefore we we need to think how we can best support uh, the inspectors mm -hmm. and uh and the inspectors i mean they have to define something is good or bad and i think that that is a challenge for us because they they don't they don't think creatively they they have to observe things so therefore uh in, in creating things for them the biggest challenge is to convince them that these are the good things because they will spot the little thing that might not work perfectly and, mm -hmm. and question then uh, the whole thing. So that's, uh, that's, that's one area. And then I guess the, the biggest uh, thing is how to transform into a more digital uh, model, mm -hmm. into a digital uh, company, and how from an IT perspective we can support that in such a diverse environment where there, the commonality of things is, is not really there. I mean, in an ERP system, yes, of course, but in the operational systems, it's really, really diverse. So you mentioned ERP. Let's maybe first talk about uh, uh, the ERP strategy and systems and then come back on, uh, on, on how digital can, can augment and, and, in, and improve inspection and, uh, and so on and so on. So, so where are you today with your um, uh, with, with your ERP implementation, and 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 what's the strategy? Where do you where do you want to go? I mean, we, we have a strong SAP background, and I think uh, we we started uh, even with the with the first installations of SAP. So I think SAP is quite proud of us as a customer because we are a very very loyal customer, still mm -hmm. starting with R two uh, and 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 with the first uh, versions. I mean, in in all our finance area and in the HR area. Um, uh, for uh, for for everything that's around the employee, we have SAP. Mm -hmm. um, we we have our, our CRM system. is it's on it's on SAP, um, and um, that's that's a global system. Yeah. Really, we we have uh, unfortunately it's not one system. Mm -hmm. uh, it's many systems. So that's that's uh, historically grown, unfortunately. But um, at least that's that's our background. So nobody else is booking outside of SAP. All the mm -hmm. invoices are going going through through SAP so that's that's where we really have a common backbone even so it's not into one system but uh, through the business warehouses we try to consolidate the data okay now like we said in the beginning it, uh, Tufsuit is, is a bit of a fragmented company because you do so many different things so many individual business units in so many different locations so coming to one common ERP, one common SAP system is also not an easy thing, I can imagine. But is that the goal? Absolutely, absolutely. We're trying to, to harmonize the processes as we're, we're moving in, into the direction of S4. Mm -hmm. We actually have set up an actual program uh, for, for, for doing that. So mm -hmm. that's, that's uh, as well including the business opportunity to, to harmonize uh, processes, streamline processes. And at the end, I mean, we're not so sure whether we will have one um, SAP system or if we have more SAP system that really depends then on the, on the final architecture. But yep. the goal is to really harmonize now from, from our environment of 13 SAP systems down to as, uh, as low as possible in terms of the count. Yep. Now, harmonizing and, uh, and, and reducing complexity, basically, is, is, I think, what is related to that. That's not an easy thing, right? I mean, it's very complex to simplify things. 
So, so, so what is your, what's your approach there? Because I can imagine that there's a lot of customizations built in, in, in the current system. So how do you make that more simple? That will be the task of the of the future to define mm -hmm. that and and create it with benefits. I think uh, convincing the business to to give up things that they have worked on uh, for for so long only is possible if you if you come up with some benefits. So yeah. we we need to really define and see uh, what S four can offer and and where we can find uh, benefits. And I, I'm honest, if you don't find the business benefits, then probably we'll, we'll end up in some modifications. We mm -hmm. will not harmonize it uh, down to zero and, and create just a, a pure standard vanilla SAP system. Yeah. I think that's where our business is too diverse and our, the demands of our customers. And I think that's, that's the, the, the part you need to bring in. Even so, if it would work for you in terms of standardization, mm -hmm. if you have so many different customers, but uh, always uh, diverse, uh, requirements, um, then then you you can't do it differently than having uh, different routes for uh, for for your customers and special uh, programs, special processes, um, and it will continue to have that. I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So your core strategy is to use SAP at least for finance, and and to uh, and to bring that to S4 HANA and and to try to harmonize and 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 simplify as much as possible. But how, how about the other platforms? How about CRM, HR? How do you see the future of that? You see everything in, in SAP or you see a combination of different systems? As we started our approach of the of the S4 HANA journey, of mm -hmm. course, we looked at the, at the world around. So obviously CRM, um, obviously HR, and uh, we're right now in the evaluation of uh, whether these uh, satellite or cloud systems would actually uh, be good with, with us and, and how could they fit into our environment. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are competitors uh, on the market. Um, so, so therefore, I think there is no final decision on where we are going, but definitely that's in scope of the of the overall SAP uh, uh, future landscape uh, that that we wanna that we wanna see, and we are evaluating all that. Yeah. Yes, uh, because this is an opportunity to make sure that you use with the, with the best platform and and the best architecture, and and there has to be an integration work has to be done anyway, <laughs> depending on uh, independent of the of the platforms that you uh, that you're gonna use. Let's talk also a little bit about the, um, the, the infrastructure side, the hosting side of, uh, of, of your ERP. How is, that, how is that organized today? And do you see cloud as a future for, uh, for hosting of ERP? Currently, our, our SAP systems are in our data center. Mm -hmm. So the, the data center is just uh, around the corner <laughs> here. Um, so it's uh, it's an observation mode from, from my office, at least, to look at. and uh, um, and. We have it there. I mean, data data is is really crucial uh, for us. Um, we 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 want to have our data with us for the moment, at least. So therefore, um, the idea that that we're currently having is that we probably will go with an S four on premise, mm -hmm. uh, and then see if there are some benefits. But if if you go into into the cloud for everything and and there are some things you you need to go in the cloud i mean mm -hmm. sales cloud uh, by name you don't have it on premise or success factor that, that that is a cloud solution so therefore if you if you if you talk about cloud strategy i would say yes for for the ones that are available on the cloud we 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 will have them because mm -hmm. that's the best uh, to do um, for our core ERP system, of course, SAP wants us uh, to go and move as well in, into the cloud. But the dependency you have, that's, that's, that's one thing. And, and the price dictation you have is there. I mean, we, we, we just uh, right now are in our renewal of the Microsoft Enterprise Agreement. Mm -hmm. And um, we went from uh, bought licenses uh, into rented licenses. And I mean, right now you have no choice of uh, accepting the price of Microsoft. I mean, they're trying to be a good partner. And I think uh, that that is a good relationship. On the other hand, they need to make profit. They need to make a margin. And uh, I always say, I don't have to make a margin in my data center. I, mm -hmm. I can do it um, for, for the cost and obviously uh, the, the level of automation uh, is not as much as, as other data centers um, if, if you go into the cloud, but 
I don't have to make a margin. And if you look into the books of Amazon or Google, they have a huge margin on their data centers. Yeah. And that's where I can be a little bit less automated or a bit uh, less optimized, um, but I still have the control over the data um, and uh, I'm, I'm the owner of the data. So, so probably that's the way we're gonna go. I mean, if there are good arguments, that's that's what we also have in our IT strategy is, mm -hmm. I mean, if you have good arguments, rethink what you said before uh, yep. and, and, and do it again. Yeah, but in general, and, uh, I mean, we've discussed this before, you're quite critical on, on cloud and I understand because of data ownership and, and control because of costs and because uh, cl cloud can become very expensive very quickly. And because of vendor lock-in, which is also uh, mm -hmm. is, is is also an issue. Yeah, I'm I'm not against cloud. I think we need cloud. That there there is no way, and that 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 is the future. Mm -hmm. The question is just if you want to go all in, or if you want to have an approach where you are the one to make the decision. If you're the one to decide whether it makes sense or not. I mean, if you're all in the cloud, there is no way to go to go back. Um, we are deploying into the cloud. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we we have uh, Microsoft Azure as the as our 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 private cloud, mm -hmm. and we're putting in the things in the cloud that that we need and where it makes sense. But we're the ones to decide whether it makes sense or yeah. not, and uh, and that's re revisited uh, time after time, and yeah. uh, and we'll see whether the best strategy is maybe tomorrow a different one than it was before. Yeah. Stefan, another um, huge opportunity um, besides optimizing ERP and, 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 uh, and, and modernizing that, harmonizing that and so on, is of course to use uh, digital in the, in the operations of the company. I'm just thinking, hey, we talked about you have many, many inspectors on the road, uh, testing processes, uh, production facilities, elevators and so on and so on. But I can imagine that there's a huge opportunity there for digital to, uh, to improve and to augment the work that these inspectors are doing. And, and, and you could build in inspection technology that, uh, that is complementary to the human uh, in, inspection that's, that's going on. How, how are you uh, working in that domain? How do you, what's the, the vision and strategy there? We're in different fields uh, in here. I mean, one is supporting the inspector so that he has everything uh, on site. So for example, if you go to an elevator and you need to find things, you need to, to see where things are, uh, we're trying to, to find uh, ideas where we can actually help that uh, to, to find it more more easy. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the support of, of, of inspector. Oh, for documents, uh, we're, we're right now um, evaluating technologies where we screen documents, find already ready things out uh, out of the documents because a lot of our inspection is also document based so yeah. you need to read uh, all the documentation and I think here artificial intelligence can really uh, support that so that for for the tasks we're, we're doing um, we are doing the more smarter task and the, the, the ones that require more the intelligence and, and not trying to filter out from a huge uh, pile of uh, paper so that's uh, that's one area the other one is uh, where for example the testing or the inspection uh, costs a lot of money for, for, for our clients. So take, for example, a, a chemical plant. If mm -hmm. they have huge uh, uh, tanks, for example, even to clean them, to stop the production, to see whether uh, there is corrosion uh, inside of the, uh, of the tanks, uh, might cost them a million euro uh, to, to actually do that because they have to clean that and yeah. we need to go in, we need to see, uh, and then you have to refill that. So the production st uh, stops as well. So if we are developing devices where we, and, and, and we are doing this, where we can already see that there is corrosion, for example, going on, and then there is an inspection earlier needed or later needed, um, that's, uh, that's supporting as well. And, and for example, for the elevators, we created a, a smart elevator uh, um, device uh, mm -hmm. that we put on elevators to also do predictive maintenance. Because I think with, with our knowledge, we were in a very good position uh, to support that uh, and, and, and give advice. Um, the only thing we need to be careful is because it's a, it's a regulated environment. Uh, you can't do everything you like. So giving a Google class, for example, to someone and this, this person does the inspection uh, of the elevator if, if it's not a certified uh, inspector, that doesn't work. So mm -hmm. th there are some limitations um, that, that we have, but we're, we're trying 
um, to digitize and, and digitalize um, and this, this environment um, for, for not only the internal, but also for, for external, so customer okay. experience. That's, that's, for example, self-service. So that's, that's where we try to put the inspector still in the, in the bigger picture and, and, and still into the center, but create an ecosystem around that mm -hmm. so that it's, uh, we are different from, from, from our competitors, for example. Okay. Let's talk a bit about data as well, because I can imagine that there's huge amounts of data coming into your, uh, your company from so many different, different sources. So what's, what's the overall data strategy and, and, and then uh, an analytic, analytics, advanced analytics, AI and so on and so on. Where are you in that, in that journey? I think everyone wants to do that, but mm -hmm. uh, the difficulty here is that we have a lot of legal entities uh, by, uh, by design or because there are some things where if you want to do an inspection, you don't, can't do consulting. So you need to, uh, to yeah. split that into different uh, companies, for example. And that means that our data, we, we have a huge amount of data, but it's not consolidated. It's not in one place. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's all over. And, and I think what we need to think is what can we actually best do with our, our data? Yep. Uh, where does it help us? And how do we consolidate that? So we are at the very beginning of, of, uh, of getting there. Of course, there are some areas where we have more data, where we can use the data, for example. Um, um, we, we, we have um, an autonomous uh, uh, checking uh, of damages. So you, you, uh, you drive through a, a huge uh, scanner, uh, mm -hmm. I would say, and, uh, and it will detect whether this is a damage or a scratch or uh, if it's just uh, um, um, some some dirt uh, on the on the vehicle mm -hmm. and that is tested because we have so many uh, pictures of damaged cars um, that that's an area where we use our data but I think we are at the very beginning we're still a very people oriented uh, business and we are moving on to that so that data yeah is is, is a bigger um, bigger value for us uh, as well in the future Okay, let's talk a little bit more about your IT organization. 26,000 people in, uh, in, in, in the business, in the different businesses. Uh, and you have, uh, how many people are the internal and externals in, in IT? Uh, for the internal, it's easy. You can count them. Uh, even <laughs> probably there is even some shadow IT uh, that that you can't count. But that's uh, around about 400 people uh, that we have internally mm -hmm. here in Germany. We we have a lot of contractors working on. So probably there there is another 200, uh, 300 uh, contractors, mm -hmm. and then everything behind where we operate uh, through SLAs, where we don't have really uh, warm bodies uh, supporting or contractors, uh, but but uh, we base. So it's, it's probably around uh, the same, uh, same amount. So I would say 400 internal. If you count total external, it's probably something like uh, six, 600 uh, in total. Mm -hmm. So about uh, a, a thousand people in, in IT, huge organization. So, and and what, is your, what is your operating model for that? How have you organized in this fragmented business your IT organization? Mm -hmm. Uh, we're structured over plan, build, and, and run, where we have our central organization, IT strategy, governance, enterprise architecture, uh, and as well the, the project portfolio management in, 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 in one uh, department. Then we have a newly created uh, CISO organization, our IT security or cybersecurity. I think that's, that's more fancy to call it uh, mm -hmm. cybersecurity. Um, that takes care of uh, global IT uh, security. And we, we have a CISO as well that we named and uh, that, that reports uh, to me on all the, on the IT security stuff. Mm -hmm. For um, the build part, um, we have um, split into our business divisions. The divisions uh, I explained at the very beginning, like mobility as one division or product services as another one. And they're doing all the build part of application that is divisional specific uh, for, 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 their, for their area. So yep. they, 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 they are building the software. They have the bigger projects on the, on the divisional scope. Mm -hmm. 
And um, uh, last but not least, in the, in the build part, uh, you also have a central uh, part of, of a build function that takes care of all central or um, um, non-divisional uh, corporate uh, uh, functionality or corporate uh, functions, like for example, all the finance, HR, CRM, and we have it bundled uh, into one area that takes care of, uh, of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, for the run part, um, it's uh, application uh, application operations uh, and uh, infrastructure and infrastructure operations. We're regionally uh, set, so so therefore we have one uh, here in Europe where the, the biggest part uh, is is Germany, and uh, I think in our data center here in Munich we're running 80% of the of the server uh, for the rest of the world as well here from from our data center uh, in Munich but um, then obviously we we also have other data centers uh, in, in in Europe as well for example in Spain uh, we, we we have one or in the UK but that's managed from uh, from from Europe okay. um, but, but but the local expertise of course uh, on on site and then we have Americas as one region uh, that takes care of the Americas region and then ASMEA and uh, everything that's uh, that's non-European because it's then Middle East, Africa um, and as well Asia uh, that, that we have and they have also their local data center but uh, the management is then um, uh, that the, the guy that reports uh, to me takes care then of the of the whole region even so we have local data centers for example in China or in Singapore. Okay uh, quite a yeah. big organization organi organized and plan built run where what is today fundamentally your role where do you spend most of your time? Uh, in, in trying to, to bring all these 400 people uh, together because I mean mm -hmm. the, the people in, in, in the run part for example they are in their local uh, in their, their regional and, and legal entities that are mm -hmm. uh, outside of, of Munich and of course the local management always has ideas what they should do and, and where they should uh, spend their time and uh, the, the same for the divisional IT that's also not here in a, in a central but we put them into the legal entity of the business because I, I truly believe that there should be proximity to where, where the best input is needed and, yep. and for the build part I think it's not technology um, that's uh, it's more the business part understanding the business so that's why they are more in the uh, in the part of the of the business and my role is now to bring them all together uh, and and have one one common theme. Uh, we we call it one IT. We we didn't call it. It's the it's the IT of Tufsud. It's the one IT of Tufsud. Uh, to make sure that everybody understands, uh, even so we are in different legal entities or uh, in different areas, different countries, we, we still have one purpose and that's IT, making our, our business happy, supporting uh, our business mm -hmm. and trying to moderate that, um, that that all fits uh, together. I think that's the, that's the biggest challenge uh, for, 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 for me um, and, and still will be in the next, uh, in the next years uh, in terms of, uh, of people. Then, of course, on architecture, the, the, the goal is to harmonize and, and streamline and, and don't create another architecture or another system here, but uh, to really be open uh, to, um, to component architecture, reusability. So that's, that's my main push uh, as well, so that we don't develop things in, in one of the, of the entities um, that cannot be reused or where somebody already has something, then convince them uh, to use the software uh, that we have uh, created somewhere else and, and reduce uh, um, uh, our heterogeneous uh, environment. But I think the, the, the second thing and the third thing is uh, yeah, to motivate the organization because I mean Tufsud is, is very well known outside for maybe for the inspectors and if you're a car enthusiast uh, the, probably people that don't like Tufsud because they don't <laughs> pass. Um, but uh, I think uh, the world is quite or is much much safer with Tufsud so that's very well for, for inspectors in, in, mm -hmm. in this business. But from an IT perspective we're not the big player here especially in Munich you need to you're, you're comparing for example with BMW or with, with, you have Google that's here um, how to how to make that a great place uh, to be for 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 our internal people and, and thinking uh, how we can modernize uh, our environment yeah so let's yeah, talk please. let's talk about that how do you what's your strategy in making sure that you attract the right people that you attract talent that you can retain it that you can grow your teams that you can make them successful 
What's your uh, secret of success there? I think we're trying to to bring um, and, and and you ask a question: How many internal and external? Uh, we're mm -hmm. we're trying to bring um, the the knowledge to to our internal people. They need to they need to create the future. They need to design the future. Or they they we want to enable them um, that they can actually uh, do something uh, positive uh, for for the company. That mm -hmm. it's not like a repeated task or where they are bored. So what we're trying to push that out as good as we can uh, to 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 extra. Uh, providers and and keep the the knowledge inside steer mm -hmm. uh, from from an inside and make it uh, therefore attractive trying to bring new technologies in uh, rethink our strategies uh, from from while to while so that we're not just following uh, what we have th thought maybe five years ago and, mm -hmm. and and put a different uh, focus on that and um, yeah include our, our people into into the process of thinking, changing, and tell them it's a constant change. Um, so you, you can actually change something. And maybe in the bigger companies, uh, you are this little part of this whole big picture here with, with 400, that, that's still big, but mm -hmm. you, can, you can do more, you can, you can change more if, if you want. And that hopefully attracts people and they talk about that open culture of change. I think change is not negative, it's, it's positive. Uh, um, and, and we're trying to establish that, uh, that culture. Yeah. Now a good CIO is not only a good manager that can bring his team and organize his team and, 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 and create the right models and motivations and so on, but a good CIO is also a, a leader. So can you uh, talk a little bit about your leadership style? How would you, how would you define mm -hmm. that? How do you, and what is the leadership style that you also expect from, from your IT leadership team? Yeah. I think my, my leadership style is to enable people and, and try to get the best uh, out of them because mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be the one that makes the, the final decision that everyone needs to ask for approval or uh, is that the right direction. I want to enable them that they are making the decisions or that they and their teams because I think at the end you, you need knowledge and IT is changing so fast so that, that you don't have the overview of everything. Mm -hmm. So we need the intelligence of all these 400 people. So my, my management style is not to make decisions, but uh, bring the team together that they are making the decisions and that they are um, the best uh, to, to, to do all the, all the decisions and, and ask them uh, to, um, yeah, to be part of, of the decision making and not just asking for something, but uh, uh, bringing something up and, and then therefore um, deciding on them themselves. Okay. How do you think you are perceived in, in your organization? What do you think people will say about you when, when you're not around, when they're having a coffee together or beer? <laughs> I, 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 think, I think they would, they, they would, uh, they would say that uh, I'm, I'm an open-minded, so mm -hmm. they, they can approach me with things. And I think that's, uh, that's the, the open door policy. If you want something, please come. And that I'm not shooting people uh, for, for making mistakes. Uh, uh, if they are done, because I mean, if we can learn from mistakes, and I think we, we all need to learn from mistakes and we make mistakes every day. Um, the good thing is if we evolve, then I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm not so happy if we continue always on the same pace and uh, if we don't think things through. I guess that then I'm, I'm, uh, they would say, yeah, he, he is not really uh, happy uh, when, when we come up with the same thing and we haven't thought it through. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, then he's, that he, he might be more angry because why did you not think of that? I mean, it doesn't need me to think of things. You should come up uh, with that and think uh, more, more globally. Okay. Well, Stefan, what, what is it that really drives you? When at the end of the week are you a happy person? I think if if we continue to make progress, if mm -hmm. if we are uh, if we are changing, I think if we are continuing to move, um, and and you can see that with SLAs, for example, um, if you meet SLAs, it's all good, and the whole company is happy. Mm -hmm. um, that that doesn't make me happy because I know that's built on the past; it's not built on the future. So uh, if everything runs, uh, we have done a good job in the past. It mm -hmm. doesn't tell you of the future. So therefore, in order to uh, to be also seen from the business as a good advisor, as a good um, uh, input-driven uh, uh, person, um, then you need to change. You need to evolve. You need uh, to to bring in technology. 
technology best uh, you can. And I think that, that that drives me that we from an IT are not a supporting function, mm -hmm. but we are an enabler. That That is my main goal. So if uh, once I, f I finish here and I go into retirement, and then hopefully the IT is even more seen as the enabler of the business that understands the business, that does the best things the be business needs. Yep. And it's not a supporting function where you just purely talk about cost. And what, what is exciting about working? I mean, you worked for a big consultant company, you worked for an automotive, BMW, and now at Tufsuit. What is attractive to work for for Tufsuit? What, what what is it that you that gets you up in the morning and say yes, I want to go and uh, and spend my time there? Well, I, I think what one, one is the the possibility to change things, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and my, my boss, the, the the CFO, really helps uh, that that we can really change whatever we need. So mm -hmm. he he is interested in are we doing good things and, and we are open to do things. And that's, that's, that's a great thing that motivates you if you come in and, and it's not like you have so many boundaries. I mean, you limit yourself basically. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's the good thing. And the second thing is I, I think working for, for, for a company that really is only interest in making the world better. I mean, in, in, in our world of now talking about sustainability, uh, I mean, th that's the greatest thing uh, to do. I mean, everything we're doing is just to protect uh, that uh, we continue to grow, that technology is, uh, is still there because if there's nobody securing that, technology could be really, really uh, um, uh, difficult and, and, and uh, dangerous. And, and if you work for a company that's pure goal is to make the world better, I think that that's a great one uh, to go uh, into the office every morning. Absolutely. Now, Stefan, you sh shared with us your MBTI profile. And, uh, and you are in the uh, Myers-Briggs personality type uh, world, you are an ESFJ, also known as a console. So you're more extroverted, uh, sensing, uh, feeling and, and judging. And people with um, these personalities, uh, they typically have the following strengths. And uh, so I uh, want to uh, challenge you to see if uh, which one you recognize uh, uh, first of the strengths and then of the weaknesses. So. Typically, people with your personality, the console, they have strong practical skills. They have a strong sense of duty. Uh, they're very loyal. Uh, they're very sensitive and warm. And they're good at connecting with, uh, with other people. Does that fit the bill? And where do you recognize you more than, um, than, than other points, maybe? I, I, I would say so, yes. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm trying to be sensible and analytic, but uh, extrovert as well. I, I like to talk, mm -hmm. but uh, if I, if it, it's, it, it doesn't need always to be uh, like that uh, to talk. I can also be quiet in the background, mm -hmm. uh, ana analyzing things and then uh, making up uh, uh, decisions. I, I like to work with people. I think um, I, I couldn't work uh, if if everything would just be on uh, on, on uh, Teams or Zoom at the meeting. I need to interact uh, with people. So so yes, I think that's that's the warm side because if the people are happy, they're doing a much better job. So my job is as well to make them happy and and uh, to take the best uh, out of them. So I guess yeah. In a sense, I would, I would, I would see myself <laughs> in that. <laughs> okay. Now, the flip side of that is the potential uh, development areas uh, that we could call them is that uh, consoles can be worried about their social status. They can sometimes be inflexible, reluctant to innovate or improvise. They can be vulnerable to criticism, to needy or to selfless. So. Um, where do you recognize some of, of, of yourself and how, how have you in your personal professional development overcome maybe some of these uh, weaknesses? Well, of course, if, if you were a strong person, you have your thoughts and uh, it's, it's always what you have to question yourself. Are you over dominating uh, mm -hmm. things? And that's, that's I think, a, a constant circle that you always have to do if you're in a meeting. Do you talk too much? Are you are you bringing in your, your values in there, but don't leave the others area to breathe? I think 
every extrovert uh, person needs to think about that uh, curiously in, in in all of the meetings and, mm -hmm. and sometimes i mean if it's uh, if it's in intense uh, then uh, then you can't control that and and you're you're probably overdoing things um but then you reflect yourself and you say okay give the others area uh, to breathe and uh, and to bring themselves uh, in um, that's uh, that's definitely uh, probably the advice for everyone that that is an extra word. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, did the others get enough airtime? That's that's my question in every meeting uh, that I have, and, and and sometimes I decide no, they don't need that. But uh, in others, it's like okay, uh, what can you actively do in order to bring the, this airtime up for from others, because. It's also there. It's 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 quite easy if one speaks, then the others just listen, and then then you need to bring yourself back and uh, and involve the others into into the in, into the meeting, for 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 example. And that's the same with your opinion. If you have a strong opinion, you you articulate your opinion. You're passionate uh, for 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 your opinion. But if the others are, are not so passionate about theirs, then they probably even with a better idea stick back because they don't want to have the, the, the arguments and they, they don't want to uh, go into, into the clinch uh, of discussing that. That's why I, I motivate everyone. It's, it's nothing personal. If I fight for, for my ideas, that's because I'm passionate. It's not that I know everything better. I, I still listen to if you have good arguments, but you need to come with good arguments. Um, mm. And that's... That there, there's a fine uh, line of uh, of overdoing this because you are so passionate about your ideas, or you are um, you, you think your your ideas or, or your sense of thinking is is, is the right one um, that you need to bring the other peoples into into the game. But that's that's why I always say, speak up. You can you can tell me I'm an idiot. I have no issue uh, with that. And if I am an idiot, please tell me uh, that I am an idiot because otherwise. We don't learn and uh, we don't evolve. Okay, Stefan, you have two children. Two uh, yeah. teenagers, a boy of 12, a girl of 15. What are the, the core values that you're passing on to your children? What is it, the core values also that you yourself live by? I think the, the, the core value is the, the same as uh, for, for Tufsu, trust and inspire trust. So mm -hmm. trust, I think that's the, that's the main value I, I want to give them. Second is openness. Uh, they, they need to be open uh, for, for everything, for, for cultures, uh, people, for different uh, opinions and, and everything. And then uh, it's like learn. I mean, that's if, if there's something there, try to do it. Don't think you can't do it. Uh, even so, it's the first time. I, I did so many things also for the first time and failed. Uh, failing is something which is good uh, and it's not, uh, it's not bad. I think these are, uh, are the values uh, for, 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 for the children. Be open, be flexible, um, and, and, and try to achieve something, whatever it is. Okay, great. You mentioned failing, and that brings us to uh, one of my favorite questions. Uh, we, you're very successful in what you've done. You built uh, a, an impressive career where we all make our mistakes. We all have our failures. So would you uh, mind sharing with us what is maybe one of your most brilliant failure in your career and, and, and what did you learn from it? I think, I mean, you, you make failures uh, every day and, and, and uh, that's, uh, that's w w when you have to learn and you, you need to reflect uh, that you're doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. of, of a bigger failure, I guess, uh, and, and you mentioned uh, all the career stations uh, I did in between uh, uh, Tuff Suit and, uh, and Accenture. That, that was another company that I started there. Uh, and I was overwhelmed by the idea uh, what was presented uh, to me and, and probably I didn't even listen enough. I, I had it in my mind what would happen there. Uh, it was a Swiss company, so I, I, didn't, I didn't do the background checks and, 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 uh, and, th and thought what actually is, is happening there or, or maybe even talking uh, to, the, to the CEO of this company mm -hmm. uh, more often trying to understand that. And then going into with a picture of myself uh, what would happen and then, then facing something completely different. 
And I think that changed my mind um, as well on, on, on how to perceive things because you need to think in all dimensions, not just uh, in one. And, and, and being the head of, of Germany sounds nice on paper, but if, if the reality is so difficult or if you don't uh, put in uh, what actually can make you successful there, um, it, it's pretty difficult uh, to, to achieve. And uh, so I think uh, thinking about uh, your the, the future and, and anticipating it more and, and if you don't know then, then talk uh, to others and, and maybe discuss with them even more um, that I would uh, definitely uh, do different and it's a failure I, I won't do again because uh, of that uh, of that uh, of that one and uh, yeah so your learning was if you're going for a new job make sure to do a good due diligence make sure that you really understand what the job is yeah. all about and, and if there's an, uh, an opportunity to be successful, because you can't be successful in, 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 in every job, right? And, and how you want to be successful. I think you yeah. need this, this small business plan. And I mean, if, if it's something you have done for, for the last 20 years, then it's fine. I probably, you know, the, the bits and pieces. So that, that's why I was less scared of, uh, of doing the CIO job because I have done similar roles at, uh, at BMW. But mm -hmm. uh, building up a business from, from scratch uh, in, in Germany that's nearly inexistent. I mean, there are other success factors uh, in there needed and you need to really do your, your due diligence. Are you the one uh, that really can do that? Is that something that really interests you? Or is, um, uh, is maybe a title or um, a perspective that's been given uh, to you more important than the due diligence and, and knowing what you can do and, and, and what you don't want to do? Yep. Uh, it's, it's not only if you're capable of, but is like you ask the question what's the, the fun driving into into the office and uh, yeah it's the people around and that you can do some things and if you're bored going into the office I mean you're you're not successful <laughs> now Stefan who looking back on your career were there important people that you learned a lot from did you have important mentors people that you could um, that you could mention and, and could, could you give an example of what you learned from who I think they're, 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 they're always different uh, people and you take spots of them. It's not mm -hmm. like, uh, I, I wouldn't say I have one where I would say I took everything from this person and tried to copy, but there, there, there are a lot of people in, in, into your career where um, you, you took little pieces and, and, and did it. So for, for example, one was uh, um, my, 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 my boss in, in, in BMW when I was uh, doing a project in China. He was uh, part of the, of the steering committee there. Uh, and was uh, Harald Krüger, the the, uh, the later CEO of uh, of, uh, of BMW, uh, mm -hmm. now not any longer with BMW, and he was a people's person. He was he was approachable. He was open-minded. You could discuss with him, and 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 he was such a good person that even of his high career uh, status, he was so approachable. So that that is something where I said, okay, I need to be approachable. I need to give the people um, the feeling that they can talk and come to me. And, and talk to me and, 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 and be open-minded. So for example, and, and of course there are others where you say, okay, they, they were more strict in, in doing things that were quite, uh, quite precise. Um, um, and they had a vision. Uh, I think uh, also my, my, my father, he had a vision when uh, we, we, I, I was born in the east of uh, Germany or eastern Germany. Um, and uh, we came over in, in 79. So even when the wall was there and, and he had a vision, he said, I, I want to move over there. I don't want to be here. That's, that's not there. So always have a vision where you want to move. Even so at this point in time, it might not be achievable or you, you don't see that uh, it is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if you want, um, you, you, you can bring that uh, all in. And then, of course, uh, others um, that were quite uh, wide in, 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 their, in their knowledge, have knowledge of everything, be interested in everything because uh, it, uh, the world is so diverse and so interesting. Uh, be open for everything. Use your yep. time. Uh, um, I mean, I wish uh, if, if sleep would then be there, that I would be a, a happy man because it uh, <laughs> just helps you to recover. And I know it's, it's needed and it's very important, but it uh, kills uh, of the 24 hours a day has um, um, and uh, non-productive hours, I, I would say. Stefan, if you look back at your life, the completeness of it, what was really 
the best thing that has ever happened to you? It's, it's probably <laughs> the family that happens uh, to you. So uh -huh. wife and children uh, that you have because well, the, you can ask yourself the question, what's the sense of life? And, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously for me, it's not just uh, business. Of course, you want to bring uh, something in and, uh, and also uh, for, for, for the future uh, that they can build on. But uh, the future and, and your children is uh, what, uh, what continues in your life and where you can bring your values in and uh, they, can, uh, they can continue with that. So probably that's the, that's the best thing uh, that happened. But uh, that's self choosing <laughs> uh, and uh, very happy on that. And the flip side of that, of course, what is, could you share with us well, maybe one of the worst things that have ever happened to you and, and uh, if you want and, and, and what did you learn from it? How did you overcome this and what did you learn from it? Well, uh, there, there is no one thing. I'm probably I'm really lucky that mm -hmm. there is not this major, uh, major event. I think every time you have a loss and, and, and people, uh, people die uh, and, and if they're dying too early, then, then, then you ask the question, why does that need to happen? And mm -hmm. uh, and then you need to live with that, and I guess that's the that's the that's the difficulty to that that you have new life uh, and life that uh, that uh, passes and, and goes away um, to bring that into that it doesn't that does doesn't kill you in the thought of why did that need to happen why why was uh, it there and uh, uh, and and I guess that that's the that's a difficulty. I mean, um, my wife lost uh, her mother very very early, mm -hmm. and and we always have the discussion about that. And uh, and she's still she's still emotional on this topic, even so that's um, yeah, more than than thirty years uh, ago. So that 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 always is like a fear um, that that you probably have that something could happen to your family, to yourself, uh, or something uh, like mm -hmm. that. Um, and, and how to overcome that because it belongs to life um, um, passing and, and, and birth. So, so, so therefore, um, live with that. That's, that's, uh, that's probably the difficulty in it. Yeah. So your family is very important. Creating success and results in the company is very important. What are the other passions in, in, in your personal life? What is it that you spend your time with in, uh, in your private uh, time? Well, I like I like photography, so and that's that's good with a family because you can photograph them. Mm -hmm. uh, even so, sometimes they don't like it. Uh, sometimes <laughs> they like it. So, my daughter went uh, with their friends um, on on a holiday trip. So we we did a nice uh, photo shooting. Uh, that that was uh, that was cool. Um, other than that, I think uh, everything around uh, electronics uh, that, that uh, fascinates me, uh, all the audio components uh, that with technology even uh, become better in, in how to optimize that. Because even in audio, if you have a CD, uh, it's zero and one, but a zero and one doesn't sound the same with different components, even though so it's zero and one. So that's a quite an interesting field in understanding uh, what what jitter or, or other things uh, are, and um, I think last but not least, it's it's wine <laughs> that makes my my life happy. That's also something. It's good because it's it's one time it's an investment, and I wish I would have bought more <laughs> wine when I when I was younger, uh, because now it gets really really uh, expensive, and mm -hmm. uh, and you can enjoy happy moments uh, with friends and and family. Uh, over a, a good bottle of wine. Yeah, I mean, wine is a, an investment in quality of life, I would say, no? Absolutely, absolutely. So, Stefan, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it was uh, really a pleasure uh, doing this interview with you. Let's go to the last question of today, and that is, um, I mean, given the success that you have built uh, and, and the young people, ambitious young digital talent that is watching these videos, what is the advice that you would give to them is that if they want to follow in your footsteps and want to become a CIO of a big, big organization? Uh, probably a couple, a couple of things. One is, I mean, treat the people the same way you want to be treated. I mm -hmm. guess that that is the most important thing. Always think, would you be, would you want to be treated like this if you treat uh, the people? And I think if you if you do that in a good way, then the people would uh, would follow you. That mm -hmm. that's one one advice. The other advice is have have a plan for the future a long-term plan and then 
plan uh, or, or work accordingly uh, to this plan, but also understand the impact of that. So if, if somebody wants, uh, wants to become a, a CIO or a CEO or whatever, I mean, uh, do understand also the implications and the bad, the, the pros and cons on that. So don't go for a title, uh, go for, uh, for the content. And if you want to, uh, if you want to drive things, if you want to, uh, if you want to change things, and if you're open-minded uh, to change as well to, for, for yourself, then I think you can become a, a great, a great uh, leader. Okay. And on that note, Stefan, thank you so much for your time. It was really a pleasure. I'm looking forward to, uh, in my next trip to Munich, to get together and have a beer together. And, uh, and uh, so see you soon and thank you so much. We'll have it. Thank you very much for having me here. It was a pleasure to talk to you, Hendrik. Great fun. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, the beer is on me if you come to Munich. Okay, that's a promise. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> yes, bye.